Good evening. My name is Mark Sloboda. I'm a senior lecturer and researcher at Moscow State University in the Department of International Relations in the Faculty of Sociology. And I've been asked to introduce uh, our lecture series that will be taught by the Professor uh, Alexander Dugan. For those of you who do not, are not familiar with Professor Dugan, he is perhaps, uh, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say, the uh, most important, uh, the most well-known political thinker, philosopher, and public commentator uh, in Russia today. Um, he's had a great deal of influence on Russian politics um, and society across uh, the spectrum. Uh, Professor Dugan will be giving a lecture series um, on ethnosociology entitled The Sociology of the Ethnos, or the Study of the Structures of Social Identity. Um, he's chosen this open university format uh, to teach it in English in order to reach a broader audience as uh, Russia and uh, Moscow State University seeks to enter the global discourse on uh, sociology, politics, and other areas. Um, just generally, um, the format of this 10-part lecture series will be uh, a 30-minute session uh, taught by Dr. Dugan specifically on ethnosociology. The next 30 minutes uh, will be uh, generally a 30-minute discussion of current events, uh, Russian foreign policy and international events uh, within the context of this ethnosociological discussion. And then the last 30 minutes will be a group discussion and question and answer session with Professor Dugan and some uh, other uh, students uh, and faculty members. Um, I would, uh, this evening, uh, we'll uh, talk mostly about uh, ethnosociology that will comprise most of this lecture. Um, and then uh, in following weeks, um, we'll get on to uh, the uh, current events and Russian relations in time. Um, Professor Dugan is, uh, would like to do this class uh, in English uh, on ethnosociology as a segue and a primer and to form the background of his theories of uh, fourth political theory and the theory of a multipolar world and the rise of civilizations, uh, his first publications in English, uh, which you can find, uh, well, for instance, at the publisher's Arctos or uh, on Amazon.com. And with that, I would like to uh, introduce Professor Alexander Dugan, the head of the Department of International Relations and the Chair of Conservative Studies at Moscow State University. So the first lecture of the series uh, of the lectures on the ethno-sociology or the sociology of the ethnos uh, is dedicated uh, to the introduction to this course. Uh, first of all, uh, we, mm, we should understand that ethno-sociology is not simply the, the, the sociology of the ethnic groups. It is something quite different. It is a particular method of studying a human society as the development of its primordial and basic ethnic structure. So, Ethno-sociology searches and finds ethnos not only where it is uh, uh, present explicitly, but also where it is absent on the surface, but continues to exercise its hidden influence implicitly. Thus, ethno-sociology interprets ethnically also, also the cases of the non-ethnic society. How? It will become clear during the development of the present course. Uh, the name of ethno-sociology was initially proposed by German anthropologist Richard, Richard Turnwald in his monumental work The Human Society and in its ethno-sociological foundations. 
uh, Turnwald studied there the sociological structures, rituals, customs, faiths, myths, marriages, games, feasts, and so on of the primitive peoples. So, already in this context, the term ethno-sociology is used in application to the primitive societies, those of hunters, gatherers, farmers, cattlemen. This meaning of ethnosociology rests its main future. The ethnosociology is dealing with the ethnos understood as simplest primary kind of human society. The ethnosociology understands this simplicity both diachronically and synchronically. That means that ethnosociology treats the ethnos as the first historical stage of the human society, that is, the diachronical uh, attitude, and at the same time as the first level, the substructure, the ground zero of any human society, including the most complex and most sophisticated one. So, ethnos is understood here as purely sociological concept that could be identified in all types of human society. In primitive societies, it is identical with the whole society. In the complex societies, it represents its basic and sometime, sometimes underground flu. So now we're passing to the definition of the ethnos. There are different definitions of ethnos in the science. One of the most current belongs to the Max Weber. Max Weber defines ethnos as human groups that entertain a subjective belief in their common descent because of similarities of the physical type or of customs, or both, or because of memories of colonization and migration. This belief must be important for group formation. Furthermore, it does not matter, that's important, whether an objective blood, blood relationship exists. The other and very similar definition belongs to Russian ethnologist Sergei Sherokagorov. He affirms that the ethnos is the human group that speaks the same language, recognizes the common descent, shares the common complex of the customs transmitted and sanctified by the holy tradition that distinguish this group from all other. The most important feature of both definitions is the accent placed on the belief in common descent and possession of the common tradition. Weber stresses that that does not matter whether an objective blood relationship exists or not. So, the ethnical belonging is based on the subjective fact and is the question of consciousness. In the ethnosociology, the biological affinity or the race plays no role at all because it is important only to fix the fact of the belief that such or such individual belongs to these ethnic groups and not study his pretensions are justified genetically or not. We are dealing here with the structures of the human consciousness and not with the scientifically proved researches. If the individual believes that he belongs to this ethnic group and if the group in question accepts this, although believing that he does, it is necessary and sufficient reason to count this person as the part of the ethnos. So, the ethnos by uh, definition, is the open 
and inclusive social structure. This openness regards the biological, racial aspect, but at the same time, ethnos is closed and exclusive social structure being limited by the cultural identity and the close attachment to the concrete, very concrete tradition. As American anthropologists Clifford Geertz affirmed, the belonging to the ethnos should be understand, understood, should be understood as symbolical statement. But all ethnology, ontology of the ethnic society, all ontology of the ethnic society is symbolic. Uh, the main features now we uh, uh, we are going to uh, to say some words concerning main features of what is ethnos. First of all, the the ethnos is something sacred. The sacred is placed in the the sacrality. The sacred is placed in the center of the ethnical being as its very essence. The, the sacred is manifestly expressed in the tradition as a complex of myths, rituals, customs, taboos, and so on. All life in ethnic context, context is essentially sacred. The ethnos includes in itself second feature. The ethnos includes in itself all universe. The nature is sacred, and the nature is ethnic, culturally conceived. The society itself and natural ambience form the whole, something whole that cannot be separated. So, the dualism between the culture and the nature is the point of view that doesn't belong to the ethics. So, the totemism, the ethereal morphic masks and myths, as well as the participation in the legends, uh, the persons of sun, moon, the spirits of the nature, forest, river, and so on, are the signs of this organic whole. In the ethnos, the collective identity is absolutely prevalent. So, uh, the other and very important sociological feature of the ethnic group. The uh, collective identity is prevalent. The individual is near to nothing, no more than ephemeral transitory, transitory moment. It is most important feature of the ethnos as the specific society, the prevalence, the predominance of the collective identity over the individual one. There is no such thing as individual in ethnos. It is a kind of pure abstraction. The being, all being is place, placed in the society. It is most important feature. The ethnos also is something essentially homogeneous. It does not know clearly affirmed hierarchy. The equality is the main ethnic law. The ethnos is incompatible with the hierarchy. The ethnos doesn't know the time. Also very important feature. Its life is based on the eternal return of the same. Its rhythms, uh, rhythms, its rhythms are essentially cyclic. So, we are dealing with a kind of very particular society with specific features that are really very different from the typical features of the modern society or postmodern one. So, in the field of the ethnosociology, there are several paradigms that are more or less contradictory. The debates between them form 
important part of the frame of the discipline. The main paradigms are so-called primordialism, constructivism and instrumentalism. The primordialist paradigm insists that ethnos is the primordial, organic, spontaneous reality and the human society is essentially ethnic in its root, roots. This paradigm applies this presumed primordiality to the primitive society as well as to present-day nations and races, insisting that they are the result of the uninterrupted, continuous, ongoing ethnical process. The Russian ethno, uh, ethnologist Lev Gumilev was the typical uh, representative of such approach. The constructivist paradigm argues against the primordialists that modern nations are artificially constructed entities in their modernity and have nothing to do with the ethnic groups of pre-modernity that they pretend to be the descendants. The constructivists insist against biological continuity of the nations and reprove the presumed racism and nationalism of primordialists. The instrumentalists, mostly belonging to the post-modernist paradigm, insist that ethnos is the form of social invention that helps to the individual to improve uh, his social position, a kind of social lift. So, the belonging to such or such ethnic group is the question of circumstances and is based on the rational choice, opportunity and evaluation of the concrete social situation. There is nothing essential in the ethnic belonging. It fully depends on the situation. Um, the task of our course is to define the legitimate limits for all these paradigms, correcting and revising sometimes their claims. In order to understand our vision, uh, where are the limits of these paradigms, where are the truths in these paradigms, we need to clarify historical frame of our ethno-sociological approach. So, uh, we don't dismiss these paradigms, but we need to think more about um, the limits, the borders of, uh, uh, in which they rest uh, relevant. So, we um, we, we need to say um, some preliminary words concerning the process of the ethnosociological development, so to give a kind of historical perspective. The originality of our course is in the basic methodological uh, scheme. We invite to understand the main structure of the stages of the society in the following, following way. So, we propose to regard uh, the history of the society in the following way. First of all, the ethnos. Society as ethnos, as ethnic society. After that, the, the people. The people uh, that we, uh, we identify with Greek word Laos. Laos, that uh, means also people or tribe or group of uh, population, Laos in Greek. That is a kind of first people, it is first kind of society. After that comes nation, so we are now in the modernity. After the nation. The next type of society is a civil society. After that, as logical result of the application of the model of civil society, gas the global society. 
and after that post society or post modern society so we have a, a kind of logical consequence the ethnos represents the simplest form of society homogeneous sacred with the prevalence of the collective identity. Uh, we could also apply to this kind of society the term of, um, uh, term of mystical participation of uh, Levi Brulli, French ethnologist and sociologist. All is based in the ethnical society on the mystical participation on the whole. We consider ethnos or ethnic society or folk society in the terminology of the Redfield as something really primordial, but with one important, very important sociological correction. It is symbolic community basing on the common beliefs in the common origin and not on the historical fact of the common origin. Beliefs, uh, beliefs mean more than reality here. So we exclude from any beginning any hint from the very beginning any hint on racism and any allusion to the biology. The ethnos is purely sociological concept in our cause. It has nothing to do with the biology or historical reality. It is a kind of how society thinks itself. <clears throat> this approach is known as primordialism of Geertz, the name of American anthropologist that I have cited already. So it is, it could be uh, called also symbolic primordialism. In this sense, the ethnos is organic and not constructed, but organic and not constructed, natural, spontaneous, in symbolical way. It is organic as noetic human consciousness is, following the phenomenological distinction between the noetic and dianoetic in Husserl. So, we understand uh, ethnos as such type of simplest so society. The people, Laos, that correspond to the Greek terms, term Laos, German term folk, Russian term narod, Hebrew term ha'am. Uh, the people is conceived here as next stage of the society. This stage is much more complex one, heterogeneous and differentiated. The people as ethno-sociological category is a kind of first derivative of the ethnos and so is something essentially post-ethnic first derivative the people consist of at least two heterogeneous ethnic groups often of more than two the one group forms elite and the other is the mass. Both of them, both these ethnic groups, originally had two different cultures whose super, superposition gives the complex culture of the society of the whole. So the people as such always tends to organize itself in complex differentiated social structure. The people is formed 
when two ethnic groups of specific types come in contact. Only after that, after the struggle between them and after the victory of one ethnic group over the other, the people is formed. So, in this way, uh, very relevant is the um, concept of Rassenkampf of Gumplowicz. Gumplowicz, uh, Polish uh, ethnolog, uh, ethnologist Gumplowicz, who has affirmed, who has created this concept of creation of the state and the political society as superposition of two ethnic groups. So it is more or less shared by many other political thinkers and uh, historical public, uh, uh, his, uh, historicists. So, when the people come to the existence as some differentiated, very differentiated social structure, there are three main forms of this structure. First, the state. So, when we have the people, we have the state. Secondary, a religion. We are, when we have religion, we have the people. And civilization. So, we have three forms that create immediately people. When we, where there is a state, religion or civilization, there is a people in the sociological sense and vice versa. So, ethnic groups never creates a state, never creates a religion and theological form. It is something other believes in gods and nature and never creates a civilization. Civilization as a kind of highly uh, differentiated culture with uh, philosophy, with uh, self-reflection, with logos. So, civilization is logocentric culture. State is also logocentric and religion also is formed around logos. So, the people is a um, um, logophore entity. So, it bears logos. And ethnos is based is formed around mystical participation, where there is no such a level, such a degree of differentiation between uh, human and natural, between society uh, and universe. So, the people um, is born when also there is new kind of time, linear time when there is not eternal return but the history, when there is hierarchy and not uh, homogeneous equality, when there is uh, the rulers, the elite and uh, the masses. So the people is very differentiated, very complex society and the ethnos is a simple society. So, the masses in the people, as the sociological category, conserve their ethnic feature, but placed in the completely different sociological context. From that follows that the masses are always ethnic, but the elites in the people acquire new features. Where we, can, where we can discern the individualism, or at least the sign of the individualism. Um, we could call it individuation, as the move in the direction of the individualism. It is not uh, fully developed individualism, it is a kind, a way 
to the individualization. So we could uh, call this kind of elite individualism a heroic attitude. Not ethnic, but heroic. Heroic as a kind, uh, heroic attitude, heroic consciousness is the consciousness of something that is coming from the man to the God. The man becoming God. Uh, the mortal man becoming immortal by uh, the power of its uh, auto, uh, of uh, super um, overcoming itself or uh, overcoming the human nature in itself. That's a kind of heroic individualism of the elite. So it is the reason why the elites and the differentiated traditional society were considered to be the descendants of the gods. So uh, the ethnos as a society and the people as a society correspond to the archaic and the traditional society. Ethnic society is archaic. Traditional society is uh, the people. So, they together form two parts of pre-modernity. Ethnic groups and peoples live in the conditions, sociological and historical conditions of the pre-modernity. The ethnic identity is simple and collective. The identity of the people is much more complex. It is ethnic, also ethnic and collective, on the mass level, but individualistic or heroic on the level of the elites. So, we are dealing now, in the case of the people, with complex, complicated, sophisticated kind of identity. There follows the second derivative of the ethnos, the nation. It is essentially modern phenomenon and it's, it is linked to the birth of the modern state, the bourgeois revolution, the advent of the technical age and the rational scientific world vision. So, nation, so, national society or nation is completely new kind of society. It is artificially created, non-organic, democratic, based on so social contract, with the prevalence of the individualistic identity. And here, dealing with nation, dealing with modern society, we could accept constructivist approach and can, can, we can affirm with uh, Benedict Anderson or Ernst Gellner that the nations are mechanical artifacts created in the concrete historical moment by the capitalist ideologues. The modern nations are little or nothing at all to do have not, uh, little or nothing to, uh, at all to do with the ethnical groups they falsely consider to be their ancestors. There is sociological gap between the ethnos and a something completely organic and the nation as something completely artificial and pragmatically created. The nation is the imposition of the constructed common identity on the post-traditional individuals, torn from their natural and mostly rural ethnic ambience. So they have with ethnos less links than in the context of traditional hierarchical state. The nation is a simulacrum of the ethnos. If in treating ethnos as such, we could accept primordialist paradigm uh, when uh, we come to the people 
where need to diversify considerably this paradigm because we are not dealing with something homogeneous we, we also uh, we are dealing also with something something complex and sophisticated but coming to the nation is the second uh, derivative of the ethnos because it is completely new form of society so we have three completely different different kinds of society in ethno sociology ethnos that should be studied with primordialist symbolic primordialist paradigm people that demands most sophisticated instrument theoretical because there is um, not so simple identity that we need to um, study uh, and we need to study two identities at least but finally in any people there are more than two identities different identities and when we come to the modern society and to the nation and nation statehood so we could freely use a constructivist paradigm uh, proposed by Gellner, Anderson and all other representatives of the um, searchers of this constructivist school. So, if we define the limits of the research, so we could not uh, oppose these paradigms, uh, but we could combine their use and concrete defined, defined situations. When we are coming to the civil society, uh, we are dealing with the form of individual identity, predominant individual identity uh, that uh, is uh, free from the national artificial identity. So here we could uh, apply uh, the constructivist paradigm because the nation is something constructed so and the identity individual identity of the uh, uh, the typic uh, bourgeois is also constructed is something artificially constructed as pretend constructivist so constructivist so if we are dealing in the nation statehood with something constructed in the civil society we need deconstruct the nation so construct or deconstruct uh, construct the nation and deconstruct it the nation in the um, conditions of the civil society is uh, always the operation that is dealing with individual that was affirmed as the norm in the first national societies so here the constructivist paradigm is uh, com completely uh, completely working is is, is functional so uh, now we could uh, we could use it but if we um, would uh, apply here primordialist paradigm we uh, could not uh, understand the nature of the civil society because it is a stage or kind of derivative uh, that follows uh, the national society uh, and that uh, create new identities uh, and uh, when we come to the post society so we are dealing with a new identity post individual identity and there, in the global society, uh, as the last stage of civil society that necessarily should be global, we could uh, find different identities. So, 
uh, identities uh, uh, that are individual as in national statehood and as in the civil society, but also partly we could uh, find, we could encounter encounter uh, the, um, uh, the rests of previous stage of civilization. And there we, we, we could find an ethnic group. They uh, could reappear in the global society. And dealing with these ethnic groups, uh, we could use this time instrumentalist paradigm. Because in the global society, uh, the ethnic appurtenance is something completely other and in a situation of organic, natural, ethnic uh, society. So, ethnos in the global society could be also uh, the, the matter of choice. So, the people living in the open uh, world, basing, based on the individual identity and the liberal uh, global world, could choose really uh, ethnic appurtenance uh, in such or such uh, situation. It could be a uh, situational or pragmatic choice, as exactly as instruments, uh, in instrumentalists uh, insist. So, the problem is not uh, the, the debates between primordialists, constructivists and instrumentalists. But the real problem is to define the co correct domain, the field of application of each of these paradigms. Primordialism, is, uh, f primordialism fits to the ethnic societies, uh, archaic societies, constructivism uh, is uh, completely completely right as an uh, instrument of the study of modern society, national society and post-national civil society. And instrumentalist uh, approach uh, could be useful in the studying concrete cases of, ethnical, of ethnic appurtenance, appurtenance uh, in the global society. The program of the postmodernism consists in the invitation to overcome the identity as the principle, including also the individual itself. So there is a kind of project to pass to the post individual identity or post identity. But in this situation, we could not speak anymore about society. We are in post-society, in a kind of rhizomatic network. French sociologist Jacques Généreux calls that dissociété, dissociety, dissociated society. Uh, uh, but uh, the other sociologists Sigmund Bauman called that liquid modernity. And Ulrich Beck, German sociologist, called it risk society. We could call also that network society. The principle of this post society, dissociated society, is the end of the individual identity that was based of the modern society in national form and in civil society, and we are coming to the post-human, transhuman uh, perspective. It is possible and near future. So when the individual is regarded also as something uh, uh, too, too identical to itself, so, the postmodernists uh, insist that we um, should make a shift from the human, from the, from the individual, to the rhizomatic, rhizomatic network, post-identity, 
uh, ever-changing something that could not be defined and that could develop in any, any sense, that uh, has not any more uh, the totalitarian rule of the head uh, on the brain or the body. It is a kind of liberation, the last word of liberalism, to liberate the body from the brain, to give the body freedom, uh, to, to grant to the different organs or the body without organs at all the real freedom to, to, to be um, what it wants to be. But it is impossible in the reality, so we should migrate to the virtuality and there we will be free, losing ourselves, uh, our previous identity. So it's a kind, a, a kind of fourth derivative of the ethnos, post-human, post-identity. It's not yet the reality that we are dealing with, but is, uh, it is a kind of near future in the world of tomorrow, prepared by all the logic of the ethno-sociological development. It is a kind of the goal, telos, of the history. It is not something arbitrary. It is not something imposed by presumed evil, uh, evil networks. It is a kind of logical end of the history, uh, uh, if we understand what was and is the meaning of any shifts evoked before. So, to finish these, mm, these uh, first introductions, uh, in the course, uh, I would like to say some words concerning diachronicity and synchronicity in the ethno-sociology. We could use our scheme in two ways. We can apply it to the historical scale. If we do that, we could see clearly, that it corresponds totally to the history of the Western societies and in the West it could be regarded as the accurate description of the historical logic of the development of social structures and corresponding identities. So, in the West, this reconstruction of the logic of social history is more or less confirmed by the facts. So, in the West, the societies passed in the reality from ethnical forms to the people, to the states, to the civilization, to the religious society, religious society. After that, the creation of the nations, Westphalian system, national statehood as basic world uh, basic principle of the international order and after that civil society organization of the european union european community as a kind as first historical application of the civil society to the concrete social reality and passing from the national citizen to the city world citizen to the cosmopolitan human right concept that is now the reality and we have in the West postmodernists postmodern project they are present already in the culture in the projects uh, in the sociological and philosophical um, concepts in the visual arts in the cinema because it is a kind to, you know, to, uh, to prepare sociological change. First of all, it is a question of art, of artistic 
creativity, of sociological and philosophical concept. After that, it comes to, to the reality. So now, we are living in the shift from the modernity to the postmodernity, from the national statehood to the civil society from the concrete civil society as European civil society to the global civil society as is uh, the idea of the liberals today. So, if we regard the West, we see, we, we see that it is almost affect this chain of the changes at the sociological and the shifts and the changes and the corresponding identities also present. So, we have had ethnic identities after the people identities, after the national identities, now individual identity, to, uh, tomorrow individual cosmopolitan global identity, and after the post individual, individual identity, postmodern identity, identity where uh, there will be possible a different kind of mixture between human and machine, between different um, species of uh, animals, chimeras and so on, uh, imagined already by uh, art, by uh, fan uh, fantasy, and by also sociological and philosophical uh, theories. So, it is uh, a kind of tomorrow. Tomorrow cyber. Tomorrow of cyber. Uh, so, when we regard non-Western society, we immediately discover very important problem. Most of them of these, these societies uh, didn't come through all these stages. And some of uh, these, these societies were obliged to modernize by colonialist practice or in front of the Western threat. So, diachronistic logic in such non-Western societies is not direct. So, we have there mixed societies with multi-dimensional identities. And that should be studied carefully. I call it, personally, archaeomodernity. So, it is a kind of society where all these staged, stages mentioned before were not Past, step by step, step by step. Uh, so they were imposed from outside, and corresponding development and the transformations of the identity weren't the fact, didn't produce. So we have a mixture of different levels of identity, some of them modern, some of, 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 of these, these identities pre-modern, some of these identities ethnic, including ethnic, and some of them cosmopolitan, liberal, and uh, including post-modern. Post so we have, for example, in Japanese society, post-modernism in, in, in the art, but many ethnic or people features in the living society. So there is a kind of mixture and modernization and postmodernization and pre-modernity. So we have archaeomodernity and at present in Brazil, for example, the society is living on the different uh, on the different levels in, in different uh, in different times. There are multitudes of times in such uh, mixed society. Uh, so, we could study with ethno-sociological instruments not only 
ethnic societies, but also the different kinds of derivatives of ethnos. So we could use as diachronical approach, but also synchronistic model that regard the complex society as the structures where there is the ethnic identity in the base and individual and post-individual identity on the top. So, any kind of society, Western or non-Western, can be considered as consisting from the different simultaneous levels. In the case of non-Western society, it is obvious and explicit. In the case of modern Western society and post-modern Western society, it is less obvious and demands the exploration of the depth, the realm of the social unconsciousness or subconsciousness. But I have tried to explain in the first introductory lecture the main frame of what is ethnosociology. Uh, that could uh, study ethnic phenomena, ethnic societies, but also post-ethnic society, complex society, modern society, individualistic society as well. For us, there will be a really challenging task to identify the ethnos and ethnic structures where, on the surface, there are absence. So, uh, the idea is that being most simple and primordial level of the society as such, ethnos should be everywhere. It, it could be identified, it could be found in any kind of society, including the ethnical nature of cyborgs or um, cosmopolit cosmopolitan individual could be studied. Uh, so, the, when we are dealing with the simplest society, we are dealing with the ethnic society. And the complex structures are always superstructures constructed on the ethnical base, including in the situation where, when they explicitly negate this circumstance, this, this condition, and reject it. So, uh, ethnos is a deepest level of the uh, society that we need to, to, to define and to identify. So, we are in the next lecture, uh, we will talk about existing scientific schools studying the ethnos and the ethnic society. North American School of well, Cultural Anthropology, the English School of Social Anthropology, the French Sociological School of Durkheim, the German Anthropological and Ethno-Sociological School of Richard Turnwald and Russian School of uh, Shirakagorov, Gumilov, Prop, and other. So, uh, it is necessary to place uh, concrete ethnosociological analysis in the existing scientific, academic tradition of studying ethnical facts and primitive society. After that, we uh, will pass to the uh, studies of ethnos, its structures, its forms, its kinds. After that, to the people and the typical creations of people. After that, 
to the nation, to the civil society, to the post-society, and at least we will end by ethno-sociological analysis of the contemporary society, trying to identify, to find any forms of identity in this most complex possible situation where we live.